Hey, Jose, how are you? Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you so much for, for having me uh, today, Arturo and, uh, and Alfredo. It's a, uh, I mean, it's a pleasure to stay here. And uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate that you are inviting me here to spend this, this fun, time, fun time with you because I know it's going to be fun, right? <laughs> Definitely. We have, we, have, we have Jose Bermejo here joining us for uh, Sir Guru Coffee Chats. Jose is an entrepreneur who has a lot of experience in um, startups. He's been uh, very successful. I'll let him introduce himself in a little bit. Um, and we'll be talking about obviously his journey as well as mm -hmm. some uh, learnings from his past, as well mm -hmm. as some uh, thoughts about what his work is going next in his career. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking forward to a great conversation today. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. My pleasure. So why don't you, why don't you start us, uh, Jose, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your, uh, what you're up to right now. Well, long story short, <laughs> let's say I'm passionate about all things um, business strategy and how to help innovations grow. Um, and then I've always been very, let's say, curious and um, curious on, on, on how can we build things that, that help the, the human being progress, right? And that's, uh, that's my purpose uh, in the life, which uh, I crafted this purpose last year, which is helping human being progress through innovation, right? So all my, I would say, professional career has been focused on the, on the high-tech industry. I've been mean, since I very finished my, my degree in computer science, I think it was 14, 15 years ago in the high-tech industry. But then, you know, because I love different things, I've been, mean, uh, you know, having a look to other industries and see how technology can help these industries to make better products with the goal of helping human and consumers uh, to, to progress, right? And that's the reason because I've been um, uh, creating my own startup in the past in real estate, which you can say, hey, that has nothing to do with high tech. Well, it was a digital real estate agency in Spain the second one, um, by, by that time, then Hightech again, now trying to start um, a, new, a new business uh, as, a, as a consultant to help innovations grow and, uh, and to help technology being adopted by the consumers, uh, which means increase the revenue in the businesses, right? So all things... Uh, that's that, that's very much my past, more or less, and uh, what I'm passionate about: innovation, strategy, and leadership. All things management and leadership and people. Great, thank you very much. And can you give us now a high-level overview of your uh, startup uh, business? Yeah, sure. Uh, why not? I mean, right now I'm transitioning my professional career a little bit, still doing what I've been doing during the past six years after my MBA, which is um, helping businesses based on technology grow. Um, so right now I'm focusing in two things, right? First one is I'm building my own consulting agency, first as an independent consultant, right? And then, then if it works, because we know that the startup, the starting up is not that easy, right? If it right. works, I right. uh, think about an agency and hiring people and all this stuff. So that's my main focus now on that agency is about technology adoption, innovation and growth strategy, right? How can we craft our technologies to being adopted by, by the businesses and, and the consumers? And then the second one, which is my side project and uh, most of people know me because of this side break, this is startupbuilder.mba, which is a validation tool. It's a validation tool based on Notion. Notion is a productivity tool that right now is, is very in hype. 
right? right? Um, so this is a, a tool to help entrepreneurs, very early stage entrepreneurs and first time founders to validate their ideas with, with this tool. That's my side project. So those are my, my two brains right, right now. Are you going to, on your um, consulting business, are you focused on a particular industry vertical or, or, or it's like high tech, high tech companies? <laughs> It's not only high tech companies, you know, because it's based, uh, the kind of consulting that I'm doing is based on two things. First thing is about marketing, but not the marketing that right now most of people is talking about, which is growth marketing, right? It's, it's that tactical marketing, right? No, we're talking about the original marketing, the strategic marketing, which means understanding the marketing ecosystem, understanding the markets, meaning that the social systems which is the interrelationships between the people, people that it's mind alike, and between them, they create markets because they consume the same product, right? So that kind of a strategic marketing. So it's so that's one thing. And the other thing in this um, consulting is about uh, um, uh, how we craft our technologies and make these technologies, no matter the industry, uh, being adopted by the markets. Because as said by Everett Rogers in the diffusion of innovations, innovations is about psychographics and the market's behaviors are about psychographics and people's psychology, right? So no matter the kind of technology, but it, it's all about understanding how the market works and what the people needs to adopt your technology and make your technology grow, right? So it's more cross industry, but in my case, more focused on B2B. I'm gonna focus on B2B businesses and more about software technologies than not B2C and hardware technologies. Got it. And when we were preparing for this uh, conversation, Jose, you shared with us that your purpose was to push the human progress with innovation. So can you expand a little bit on that? Um, I thought that was very, very interesting. I would love to hear, I would love for you to share that with you. Yes, of course, uh, my pleasure to explain it. So yeah, I said, I've been all my life in, in tech and um, during these years, I've been seeing a lot of things that could be improved, right? And uh, more when you travel, when you travel, your creativity works like, right? It's traveling, it's, uh, it's wonderful, right? Because you're very creative and you are seeing problems that you don't have every day, right? So when you come from technology and then you have a background in business, you kind of match both things, match the technology and, uh, and match the human problems, right? And then match how technology can help with innovations, those human problems. So with all these years, you know, mixing technology and mixing uh, business and mixing uh, problems, um, you know, I, I realized that what I really love is, is trying to help solve common problems or not common problems, but problems for the humankind in a way that technology is helping us making progress, right? So what does that mean? That means that my purpose can be achieved in different ways, right? So I can build my own startup. Mm -hmm. And if I'm lucky, this is gonna work, right? And I'm with one startup and one product at a time, I'm helping with this product, making this market that is consuming my product progress because they are doing something cheaper or better or with less pains, right? That's, that's human progress in some sense, right? So that's what I mean with human progress. So I can help building my own startup with a product or I can help mentoring or coaching entrepreneurs because you know they are gonna push this human progress or I can do consulting business for right. technology startups. So I can do this in several ways, right? Um, and now I'm thinking to do this um, with VR consulting business. That's, uh, I don't know if I'm, uh, answering your question, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, thinking in terms of customer acquisition, 
Can you share with us a, a successful customer acquisition hack? Yeah. Um, two hacks. First is, is trying to be helpful and a good person. This is a hack for life, mm -hmm. not only for customer acquisition. <laughs> so, but it works really good for customer acquisition. So, I mean, <laughs> You, I'm always open trying to, to help others via direct message or not that much to jump into a call, right? Because at the end, it's very time consuming. Sometimes I try to be helpful jumping into a call and, but I always have the mindset to let's help, right? And then not sell, but help, let's help. And then you help the sales and the acquisition will arrive because you are putting others um, needs before your own needs, right? And that means you're empathetic with them. And that means you have a, a good motivation for all the people. And at the end, that pays off, that pays off. So for me, that, that's the first hack. The second one, if I may, it's a uh, word of mouth, right? Word of mouth, I think it's really underrated. Uh, but if we go to the very first marketing um, um, reports and uh, when marketing was invented and we go to the diffusion of innovations and how innovations get diffused among the people, we'll see that the word of mouth is the most powerful tool that we have for our products, right? So really understanding how the social networks and the social systems work and what the people need to, dif to diffuse our innovations at, and talk with them because best is make people trust your product and then they will talk between each other. That's what is going to, is going to, to rocket the sky, your, your sales, the word of mouth, and then it's going to scale a lot your business and it's going to go down with your customer acquisition costs. Otherwise, without, without word of mouth, customer acquisition costs will be too high for most of the businesses. Right. Right. More of the kind of organic, uh, organic growth. And and now that you mention, um, I mean, I was listening to you talk about like you know human interaction and the, the connections, and now kind of word of mouth. I was thinking, you know, that we we actually met uh, through our interactions on on Twitter. And yeah. you were actually, uh, you know, you were very helpful, giving us some some insights on your on your experience on, on partnerships. So that was actually uh, pretty interesting. So how, how do you see like it's a, it's a little bit kind of a tactical question, but how do you see Twitter, you know, playing on your personal brand and helping you help mm -hmm. your your business? Mm -hmm. I see it very powerful depending from the for what purpose you use Twitter. Uh, what I found is Twitter is great and it's helping me to grow along my personal brand. Uh, of course, you need to focus your strategy, um, like always. The point is, it all depends in my experience in what kind of storytelling and strategy you have. But most of all, in what kind of audience are you looking for? So I see an amazing audience in Twitter, really helpful, everyone uh, open to receive your messages, open to help you. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing the vi virality of Twitter and how people is helping with word of mouth. So it's tactically, it's a really good tool. But then in my experience, depend on your target audience. It works really good for the fashion economy, for indie hackers, for early stage entrepreneurs. I'm not sure, and I've not seen that for more major business, small and medium business. For that, in my experience, LinkedIn worked better. But for a startup ecosystem, entrepreneurship, early stage, fashion economy, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's a tool everybody should be there if the target audience is that audience, for sure. 
No, it's great. And I think, you know, I, I, I share I record to those comments. We we met you on Twitter and we're glad that we're engaging there uh, in a very productive way. But there's so many people and so much information that it's sometimes hard to keep track of everything. So how do you avoid burnout? Well, that's uh, <laughs> I'm reminding when I think it was three or four weeks ago, I said in Twitter, somebody should build a CRM for Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly my direct message were, were mind blowing. Everybody right. wanted to build a CRM suddenly, you know, hey, I'm building this, I'm building this. And now, <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's crazy how, how Twitter works, right? And, uh, and the virality that he has. Uh, but in a good sense, right? In a good sense. So, uh, yeah, sorry, I was a little bit disturbed by, oh. <laughs> by the door. <laughs> Probably right. we have to cut this. Well, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> the question, how do you avoid burnout? You know? Oh yeah, how do you avoid burn, burnout? So yeah, I feel really overwhelmed uh, for all that's happening. So I just need to disconnect. And how do I disconnect? I disconnect having times without notifications, at least two hours a day without notifications. Before I'm going to bed, no notifications. I read, I read in my iPad, but I turn off my notifications. And then what's probably most importantly for me, well, there are different things, right? Two very important. It's working out every day, working mm -hmm. out and having a hard workout for me is a way to disconnect and focus my mind on something that is not business, that is not, is not social network, it's just my mind, my body, and pushing me to the next level of, of the sports because I push myself a lot. So that makes me feel like I'm just focused on this. So when I come back and I start working again, it's like, you know, I'm new, I, 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 can, I can take the whole day. And then spending time with the people you love, right? Um, spending time during the weekends and disconnecting, uh, going for a walk with my wife, or, you know, when, um, it, when right now with the COVID, we cannot, right? Taking right. the car or going wherever, right? right. Having your time to disconnect. Uh, another ones, I don't like, um, I don't like yoga and all this, but, you know, it could be your, your, your thing to do, right? So it's just fighting your time with our notifications, to relax, to be mindful, to stay with yourself and to stay with the people you want is, is how I, I avoid burnout. There, there is definitely, um, you know, an equilibrium that you need to find. Um, and, and we see that here with, with entrepreneurs, right? Um, sometimes, you know, when you're working for a company, you're saying, oh, like I'm, I'm working so many hours and then you start your own business and it's like, there's no one behind you telling you that you need to finish your work, but it's actually, you know, yourself yeah. like, oh, I need to do this like 50 different things. Um, so actually disconnecting is very important, but the other part is like, for example, are you very like organized and, and have like a framework to say, okay, like I work, you know, 11 hours and you know, that's, that's it. Or do you prefer like working in the mornings versus nights? How, how do you organize yourself? Mm -hmm. I have to say that during the last month, because we are moving and all this stuff that is happening with COVID, I feel less organized, much less organized, and my life is a little bit more crazy. But what I used to do is wake up in the in the very early morning, go for a workout. It's like, okay, I have my homework done, and then I'm ready because the workout is, is so energizing for me, right? Then after the workout, I work all day straight. Some days I cook, like today I've been cooking rice, like kind of paella because I'm from Valencia, right? So I know how to do the real paella. <laughs> so I like to cook. It's another time for me to relax, to disconnect because I love it. Uh, and then I get back to work. Um, and then during the night, I see a series with my wife. We stay one hour and a half in the sofa, um, being this, watching a series and then while well, we are in, in, in bed, disconnecting the notifications, reading half an hour at least, um, and then that, that's it, that, that's more or less my day. Trying to 
I try to balance the goals I have. So sometimes people say to me, hey, you, you, you're pushing too far our goals. Yeah, because I need my time, my focus time, and I need to balance my entire life. So what, what happened a lot of times is that we're packing full of goals yeah. our weeks, right? And then you don't feel productive because you don't have time for yourself and for doing the stuff. Because yeah, the goals are, are really important, but, but I feel, so I have a limit of goals. I, I, I don't have a limit of five hours call a week. I just have a look through the calendar and I see, I see the calendar, I see the empty slots and I say to myself, hey, I have enough time for me to focus on what, on what I need to focus to get what I want to have done during this week. And then if I don't have that time, I push back some calls, you know, and I try to organize, but it's the way that I'm trying to feel productive, you know, balancing almost everything, balancing the calls I have, balancing the time I put on admin staff, on moving out the staff, on working out, on being with the people I love, on reading, you know, trying to have a balance. But to be honest, I don't have, I don't say I have to these hours every day. Mm -hmm. What I for sure have is one hour to two hours workout, half an hour of reading, and two hours with my wife. And then the rest is, I know it's work. And then I just balance my time with calls, work to have, uh, to feel productive. I think, yeah, I think, and in particular now, you know, that everybody is working remote. Um, you know, it, it, I, I used to work for, uh, for Cisco, uh, you know, oh, yeah. many years before the pandemic. And, and, you know, I did a lot of, uh, so I, I've been in consulting for many years, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and um, you know I, I had like so many calls, and at the end of the day, I mean everybody was used to having like you know all of these calls, but then it was like no, I need time to you know do the actual work. And so I think you know your what you were talking about is a great uh, productivity hack because sometimes you know leaving a gap between one call and the other of half an hour doesn't allow you to get into like the right mindset to solve you know like complex issues you're not you, you need like you know 40 minutes to really you know, get back in the mindset and, and, and solve something that that requires you know some a good amount of concentration yeah so you know i i definitely agree that controlling mm -hmm. your your calls is key to to being able to add value to your day yeah, I mean, I feel proud to that way. And another productivity hack to me is, I say, have a look to the to the long term, not in five years from now, because that's you do that once once a year or once every six months, right? But I like to balance both views, right? It's, it's like I ask myself if what I'm doing this week is, is making me to stay in six months where I want to stay, right? So I have a look, I think about the long-term more mid-term, let's say, and then I keep working on the short term and, 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 and what needs to be done this week. But I try to balance a lot this more mid-term and the short term. I'm not always focused on doing things that are important to be done this week or urgent, right? I try to put things that should be done in six months from now. That way I see where, where they, you know, cross the paths and that helps me to be productive and to, to say to myself, to say to myself, hey, yeah, you're in the, in the good path, right? It's uh, both paths are, um, are, are, are one after another, right? So that helps me too. It's uh, not only focusing the very, very short term, but changing, you know, the the way the you lens. see it. Yeah. The lens. Thank you. The, I was looking for that word. <laughs> Thank you. That's great, Jose. Um, in, I think another key trait of entrepreneur in the entrepreneurial world is, especially now with the pandemic, is having resilience or building a resilience, if you will. So in terms of resilience and growth mindset, can you share with us how 
your biggest setback as an entrepreneur and how do you overcome that? Yeah, probably, I wouldn't say it was a super big setback, but I remember last year when I tried to start um, the community Grow Seeker, I mean, I pivoted three times until I came up with the community. It was Grow Seeker before Startup Builder, right? And it didn't work. I tried to make it work between April and uh, August, April. Yeah, April and August, more or less, big numbers. And it didn't work as a paid community, right? Um, it was this hype on the paid communities, still is there, right? But it didn't work. Um, so that, that, was, that was somehow hard in the sense that, hey, this is not working. I've been voting three times. I've been talking with more than 100 entrepreneurs. You know, they were all, more than 100 joined the calls. People was engaged. And that was a really good learning, I would say, because everything was free, right? Then when I started to charge, nobody was there, right? <laughs> so yeah, I learned a lot about that. And uh, yeah, that was tough times in the sense that hey, I'm, I'm not having any income from this because I was leaving my company, you know, my employer in the meantime. So I needed income too. Uh, well, fortunately my wife was and, and she's working still. Um, but yeah, that was, that was, um, the, the longest period, I would say, in the last probably 10, 12 years, saying to myself, I'm doing something that is not working. Mm -hmm. You know, and that wasn't, that was tough. It's, it's, it's difficult on several levels, right? Because there is the, you know, the part of your ego that says, how can I not make this work? Then there is the other part that says, you know, maybe, you know, I shouldn't stop trying, right? Why must stop trying? <laughs> but, but then there's the other side of you need to really take an assessment and say, does this really, you know, make sense to, to keep pushing? Yeah. Does, does it make sense? Is that what I want? Is that aligned with my purpose? And I think those are very important questions that sometimes you need to answer yourself realistically. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and it could be really hard. I, I, I agree. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Completely, uh, completely. I have one, one last question from my side. And I know you mentioned a little bit about you. You like reading a lot. So is there any favorite book that you're reading right now or that you have read in the past that you recommend for our audience? A book. I was thinking more in a movie, right? More, more, okay. more than a book. Sure. Um, my, because right now I'm I'm reading books that I've read in the past, um, rereading because I use the books. I don't read too much books news. I used to have you know some books that are kind of my guide. Mm -hmm. I will read them and then in the middle I put one new book from time to time. So you know that that's my way. But right now I was thinking more in soul the okay. new Disney Plus movie because that was very intense for me, a very emotional movie. And uh, it, it helped me. I saw it two weeks ago mm -hmm. with my wife. And um, it, it made me, again, ask myself, hey, am I doing what I want to do? Is that much important? What I want to achieve, you no know, talking about the purpose or what's important is the journey. Our life is short, right? And we're gonna we wanna make a change, not because at the end we've accomplished our purpose, but because during this journey we are making a change in the people that we talk every day and we are helping them grow and we are helping them help others grow, right? So soul is being is highly recommended for everybody. And uh, it's not just a movie for kids. It's a movie that um, we, we got to reflect on the, on the sense of the movie, I think. Uh, and I recommend to do that to everyone. 
add it. We'll, we'll definitely check it out. It's on the it's on the queue. <laughs> yeah. It's been a pleasure fine. having you uh, today. Pleasure was mine. It's Wish mine. you good luck with um, your next adventures. Keep us posted, and of course, we'll keep in touch sooner or later, whether on our coffee chat or whether on Twitter. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me today and for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.